What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video I'm going to show you how to use standard JS, which is another tool to help us write clean and error-free JavaScript code. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get started, there are a couple prerequisites in order to follow along with this video. The first one is that you'll need to make sure that you've downloaded and installed Node.js as it's required to download and install standard JS into our project. Now I'll be using Visual Studio Code throughout this video along with the associated standard JS extension, but you can feel free to use your own editor of choice as long as it's supported by the standard library. And finally, you should have some familiarity with JavaScript as it's required to basically understand and make sense of the different things that standard is going to point out to us in terms of errors inside of our JavaScript code. All right, so what exactly is standard JS? So standard JS is a style guide, a linter, and a formatter all in one. So if you've been following along with this channel, we've done several videos on how to install and configure ESLint in Prettier, and Standard is essentially an alternative to those tools. Now, the real selling point of Standard is that it just works, so there's no decisions that you need to make regarding your code style, there's no configuration file that you need to create, um, and there's no overrides for any of the rules. So basically what you see is what you get in terms of what you get with Standard out of the box. Now, this could turn a lot of people off. Some people are very opinionated about how their code looks, but having less decisions to make as a developer can be quite good in a lot of cases, and that's where Standard comes in. Now, it's important to note that Standard does use ESLint behind the scenes, and we'll see how we can temporarily disable some rules in our code if we feel that you know they do need to be disabled. Um, and we can use those using ESLint comments. And if you're not familiar with ESLint or ESLint comments, I'll go ahead and link a video down in the description so you can go ahead and learn about those if needed. Now, it's also important to note that Standard is not new. It's actually been around for many, many years. Uh, the latest version, which is version 17, was released over a year ago, and it doesn't seem like the project's being actively maintained, at least as of right now. Um, that's not to say that it's not going to be in the future, but it's just something to keep in mind if you are using cutting edge JavaScript features. All right, and with all that, out of the way, let's go ahead and see how we can install standard JS into our project. All right, so on my screen here, I have a project that I created specifically for this demo, and it's a pretty simple NPM based project. I do have a package.json here, so you'll need to make sure that your project is an NPM based project. So we can go ahead and install standard as a dependency here. And then I have a JavaScript file that I created that has a bunch of different errors in it, and we'll see how standard is going to catch and fix these errors. So you can see that we have some mixed uh, uses of of semicolons here. We've got some comments here saying that they are unnecessary semicolons. So this is one of the standard rules is that we don't need to include the semicolons inside of our JavaScript code. We have an assignment here instead of a comparison. We have an undefined variable that's being used. Uh, we have some unreachable code underneath this return here. And we have an incorrect function declaration, which you can see we're missing the parentheses. So I am getting a little bit of feedback here from VS Code, uh, but we'll see how standard is going to vastly improve the errors that we're seeing inside of this file. What we want to go ahead and do now is install standard into our project. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the standard JS documentation, which you can find at standardjs.com. And we can see here that we have the standard JS logo. Standard JS stands for JavaScript standard style. And it's basically a standard style that you can use to make sure that your configuration is exactly the same across your code base, any contributors code bases, and pretty much across any project that you choose to adopt standard. So one of the things that I mentioned in regards to standard is that there is no configuration, there is no rule override. So what you see is what you get, regardless of which project that it's installed into. So we can scroll down here, we can see a little bit of information about what standard is. We already covered this in the beginning of the video. And what we really want to take a look at here is the installation section. So we can either install this as a global package and we can run the standard command line tool uh, from basically anywhere. However, I always recommend for tools like this to install them at the local level. That way you can make sure that, you know, any developers that are contributing to this code base with you um, will be able to you know, adhere to the same styles and the same rules that you have specified since you're using standard as a dependency. It also helps too if rules change between versions, you can always make sure you know which version of standard you have installed inside of your project. So what we want to do is use the second option here and install standard as a dev dependency. So let's go ahead and jump back into VS Code and I'm going to go ahead and use the built-in terminal for the remainder of this demo. And you can access that by pressing control tilde if it's not already open. All right, so what we want to do here is go ahead and install standard. So we're going to say npm i dash dash save dev and we're going to install standard. 
Go ahead and hit enter here. And after a minute, we should see that it installed standard as a dev dependency. That's what this save dev flag does. And we're using standard version 17.1.0. After installing this, it's pretty underwhelming. Doesn't look like it really did anything at all um, because we have not installed the extension yet. However, even without the extension, uh, which we'll take a look at in a minute, we can run the standard JS tooling uh, from the command line. So for example, if I want to go ahead and see the errors that are inside of all my files, I can go ahead and run npx, which is going to allow me to invoke the standard utility. So I'll say standard, and I'll go ahead and run this against my index.js file and go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. So because my code actually has a syntax error, so not only do I have you know bad JavaScript practices throughout the code, I actually have a syntax error that I cannot recover from. So in this case, we can see that standard using JavaScript standard style. I have a parsing error here, unexpected token, and I have a curly brace. And essentially that's coming from that first error that we saw, which is this inner function that has no parentheses. So let's go ahead and add the parentheses here and save my file. And now if I go ahead and run standard standard again from the command line, we can see that I have a bunch of errors that standard is catching inside of the command line here. So I can see that I have an unexpected var to use let or const instead. Strings must be using single quotes. I have an extra semicolon, I'm missing space before the function parentheses, so on and so forth. So there's lots of problems inside of this file. Now, one of the cool things that we can do is automatically fix a majority of these by running the standard command with the dash dash fix option. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let's say npx standard and then index.js so that's the file we're going to run against if we want to run against everything we could just go ahead and leave this off of here and that will run standard on every single file inside of my repository let's go ahead and clear this to give us more space and let's go ahead and run the fix command to see how standard will fix my file so we'll say npx standard index.js and then dash dash fix to enable the automatic fixing so I'll go ahead and enter here and you can see that it fixed quite a few of the errors, uh, but there's still some that it cannot recover from. So expected a conditional statement, instead saw an assignment, so it can't fix this automatically. We have an undefined variable, so obviously can't fix that either. Um, some unreachable code, can't fix that either. And it's got an inner function that's defined but never used. Obviously it's not going to delete that function because I might need it in some cases, uh, but we can see that it fixed quite a few of the errors. So you can see it got rid of all my semicolons got rid of all my double quotes and swapped them for single quotes um, and you know did quite a bit of cleanup uh, to my file here so this is cool but obviously we want to be able to do more than just work with the command line we want to be able to see these errors in real time inside of our JavaScript code and so that's where the standard extension comes in uh, for VS code and they also have it for other editors so if we go back to the standard JS style guide under the FAQ section there's a question that says, are there text editor plugins? If we go ahead and click on this, we can see that there's plugins for Sublime Text, for Atom, Visual Studio Code, for Vim, Emacs, Brackets, and WebStorm. So it's quite a few uh, different extensions depending on what editor that you're using. Like I said, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna go ahead and just install this through the Visual Studio Code extension marketplace. So if I go back to VS Code, first thing I'm gonna do is undo the changes in this file to get us back to a state where, you know, there's a bunch of errors in this file. And now what I'm gonna do is go over to the extensions panel and I'm gonna search for standard and it should be the very first option here from standard, which is the developer. As of the time of this recording, it's got almost 400,000 downloads and a five-star rating. However, there's only four reviews. So this is a little bit of a lesser known tool in the JavaScript ecosystem. Most people will just lean on Prettier and ESLint to handle all of their formatting and linting. But like I said, if you want to take some cognitive overhead off of your plate as a developer, standard is a good alternative to those tools um, as long as you can deal with some of the standard formatting that it offers. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is install this extension and go ahead and close the information, close the extensions panel. And you can see that immediately I'm getting feedback from the extension inside of my editor. Now, if you don't see the feedback in your editor, you might need to close your files and then reopen them to get it to kick in, or you might need to restart Visual Studio Code. So sometimes there's a little bit of a hiccup when you install a new extension. I installed it a little earlier just to test it out. So my Visual Studio Code already knows what to do. All right, but you can see here now we get a lot of extra feedback. So if I hover over these, I can see 
Here's my extra semicolon. You can see that I'm using var instead of const or let. I'm using double quotes instead of single quotes, so on and so forth. I have some indentation problems here, so trailing spaces are not allowed. So there should be no space there, uh, so on and so forth. So a lot of these are automatically fixable by the standard library itself, and some of them are not. So it's really cool that we can see these errors inside of the editor. However, we want to also enable the ability to automatically fix these errors anytime we save our file. So if we actually go back to the extension for standard and take a look at some of the documentation, we can see that we go ahead and install it, enable the extension, and then we should be good to go. As long as standard has been installed as a dev dependency inside of our package.json, which it is. However, there are some settings that we can use to configure the extension. So it's automatically enabled by default. It's not enabled globally, so it's only enabled for the project that I'm working on. It's running the linter anytime I save my file or anytime I type in my file. But what I really want is the ability to auto fix on save. So what I need to do is actually change this setting for auto fix on save. And I need to go ahead and set this to true. And so what we can do for that is go into our settings menu, which is gonna be down here in the left, this little gear icon, and then go ahead and click on settings. And what I'm gonna do is click over to my workspace settings so that these changes only apply to this project. And I'm gonna search for standard. And we can see here there is, you know, standard, it is enabled. It's not enabled globally. And if we scroll down through the various options here, we should come across one for auto fix on save. And this will give standard the ability to automatically fix any errors whenever we save our file. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And we can see in our file explorer, what that did is create this VS code folder, this .vs code folder inside of this settings.json file. So meaning this, these settings apply specifically to this project only. We can see that the standard.auto fix on save has been set to true. And so if this file was committed to a GitHub repository, for example, any developer working on this code base and using the standard extension would automatically get the benefits from standard JS. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and then head back over to my index file. And now if we go ahead and save the file, you can see that it automatically fixed all of the fixable errors, which is the same thing that happened when we ran it inside of the command line. And then it gives me the ability to go ahead and fix everything else. So for example, if I wanted to fix this up, what I need to do is go ahead and get rid of this trailing space. And so when I saved it again, it actually fixed another set of errors. So it got rid of those trailing space issues. And then stuff like this, it's not gonna be able to fix. So for example, it doesn't know exactly what I want to do with this bar equals 100. Do I want to make it loosely equal? Do I want to make it strictly equal? Is it not equal, right? So it's not automatically going to be able to fix this. So I, as a developer, need to, uh, you know, write code that makes sense. So in this case, I do want to do a triple equal. All right, and now we can see that it's giving us another error saying that bar is never reassigned, use const instead. So if I go ahead and save the file again, you can see that it went ahead and made that change for us. I didn't actually have to make that change manually, which is pretty cool. So you kind of cascade through the errors and as you fix certain ones, other ones will automatically fix themselves on the next save, um, depending on how your changes cascade down uh, your code base. All right, so we can see here we have this console.log non-existent variable. So I actually don't need this. So I can go ahead and delete this out of my code. And you can see it enforces things like having too many extra spaces in the code base. So one more than one blank line is not allowed, which is pretty cool. Then down here, I have some unreachable code. So this code after the return is not going to be reachable. So I have errors in both of these. So this is declared a value, but it's never read. And this console.log will never execute. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the return. And so now my squiggly on the console log goes away and the last thing I have is this inner function that is declared but never read so at the very bottom of this I'm going to go ahead and just call this function and you can see I even have a habit of putting semicolons it's one of the things that I personally dislike about standard is the use of no semicolons but for most cases in JavaScript they actually aren't needed um, and the cases where they are needed standard actually handles those in the form of syntax errors so pretty safe uh, in this case in order to omit them. And so you can see now, once I've done fixing up my file and no longer have any errors, I can double check this inside of the terminal by running npx standard. And you can see that we no longer have any errors, which means my code is now linted and it's automatically formatted. And I didn't have to do any configuration. I didn't have to do any setup. The only thing I needed to do was install the dependency and install the extension and that's it. So that really is the nice feature of standard, even though you may not agree with all of the rules uh, that it has set up, not having to think about, you know, configuring the different rules and figure out which preset you're going to inherit from or any of that stuff you have to do with ESLint and then configuring it with 
prettier and all that. You don't have to worry about that with standard. You just install it, install the extension, and you're good to go. Now, like I mentioned, it does use ESLint behind the scenes. And so we can disable certain errors inside of our JavaScript code by using ESLint comment. So let's go ahead and see that really quick. So for example, let me go ahead and make a change to line eight here and change this to a double equal. And so you can see here, we're getting an error from standard saying expected triple equals and saw double equals. Now let's just say I had some legit reason where I wanted to use double equals instead of triple equals. I can use an ESLint comment here to disable this rule. So for example, I can go ahead and make a space here and then go ahead and use the comments syntax and type ESLint disable next line. That will disable any rule uh, for the next line, or I can specify the specific rule I want to disable. And the rule for enforcing triple equals over double equals is actually shown. Let me go ahead and just delete this here. So the actual ESLint rule that it is enforcing here is this EQ, EQ, EQ. So you have the standard library doing the work, but like I said, it's using ESLint behind the scenes. And so you can always see what the rule name is here, just in case you need to disable it. So in this case, like I said, if I had some legit reason why I needed to use or I wanted to use double equals, I can go ahead and disable just that rule, which would be EQ, EQ, EQ. And you can see that that syntax error went away. Go ahead and save my file. You can see that it's not trying to fix that and put a triple equal there. And also see if I run MPX standard inside of the terminal. I no longer have any errors. So if you ever need to disable a rule for a particular line of code or even a block of code, um, you can still use ESLint comments in order to do so. If you want to know a little bit more about the ESLint common syntax, I do have a video uh, that I did about ESLint and I cover the different ways that you can use comments inside of your JavaScript code to enable or disable ESLint rules. All right, so before we finish, I wanted to jump back over to the standard documentation and just reiterate the fact that you cannot change a rule. So you can disable it if you want to, uh, but you can't disable the rule via a config file. Now, if you really want to have control over the rules, you can use ESLint directly and then use the ESLint config standard uh, to layer in your changes on top. But again, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of standard. There's lots of other presets and various tools out there for ESLint that you can use to you know, configure it to your heart's desire. Um, but the whole idea behind standard is you install it, you just use it, and you don't have to worry about configs or any of that kind of stuff. So it is possible, um, but like I said, at that point, you might as well just use ESLint and some other configuration. All right, and that is gonna go ahead and conclude this video on how to use standard JS. As always, thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you like this video and found this information valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna be learning a lot more about web development, including JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and everything else in between. So if that's what you're into, I would love to have you along for the journey. All right, well, until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next.